Thinking about you, girl, by looking up us for a sign. Like Prince in purple rain. This type of love is blind. It's my turn to tell a story. Let me tell it through a rhyme. Got this feeling of forever from this mountain that I climb. Then I look up to the sky and jump up to the sky. So floating in the air, I poke an eagle in the eye. Okay, maybe I made that up, but can I say I tried? So I keep climbing up these stairs until I reach the, the top. And if you let me love you, girl, I saw my love will never stop. And we'll never die. And girl, if you should fall, I'll catch you like a shooting star, baby, if you should call. Hey, Hawaii, late nights. With Jeff Don on KPRP, am650.com. Okay, so it is Series 2. Uh, the legendary Jeff Don is back. I know you know who this guy is. He um, he has so many different credentials, but mine, the one that uh, is most dear to my heart is Hawaii Five-O because that is where we first met. It is. Um, I am a makeup artist for the film and television business, and uh, Young Han, myself, met on the Hawaii Five-O set over a couple of years ago. I run the makeup department on the show. And he came along and started uh, PAing, which is considered, <laughs> yay. He is, uh, was a production assistant, they call it PA for short, which yes. basically you do a little of anything and everything, and you just are underpaid and you get yelled at a lot. True, but it's also, you know, I actually had good word from a, a student that graduated from film school. And, they, and well, he tells me, you know him, Nevada, Nevada Jones. Of course. He turns to me one day and he goes, you know, um, one day on the set, is more than you ever get in a whole semester of a uh, college film. That's very true. Um, w- when you go to festivals, one of the main questions that people ask these filmmakers who are considered successful because they have films that are being shown at the festivals. Sure. Um, do we go, as film lovers, do we go to school and learn this, or do we just try to get a job on a set? And every single one of these people will basically say, you will learn more on a set than any place else, but still go to school. Of course. Get Go to school, yeah, learn the basics, learn the foundation, learn the disciplines of it, and then get out there into the meat grinder and get yelled at and fail and and succeed and uh, become exhausted and all those other things. Sure. You know, uh, the one thing that a lot of people don't know because those that are like fortunate or unfortunate, depending on the, <laughs> their point of view about learning about what a production assistant does, they don't realize the, the education and the rewards that you receive from it. In fact... You know, pointing at the fact that I was a PA, that actually conditioned me for this, doing this whole crazy, <laughs> this crazy <Yes>. schedule. <laughs> yes. But, well, you know, when you're a production assistant, it kind of conditions you to a lot of things because you have exposure to dozens of different fields, sure. whether it's the arts, whether it's the crafts, whether it's building things, creating things, um, using your brain, using your body, using your hands. Sure. You really get to, it's a whole village that's building this thing called entertainment. And right. it might be something like construction. It might be makeup. It might be grips or electricians or editing or sound. You have such a variety of choices to get into. And as a production assistant, you learn the basics and you also learn what those people do. So many times people that are very successful at those different crafts sure. started out as production assistants. Take example of my favorite assistant director, Mike Newman, Michael Newman, who actually was trainer to you. Absolutely. Michael Newman is a our, one of our first assistant directors. And first assistant directors really have the responsibility of the flow and the safety of the set each day. You have so many scenes you have to shoot. You have so many sets that have to be, um, you have to arrive at, you film, then you move on to the next set. It's his job to make sure, or her job, to make sure that all of those things happen happens safely, and everyone is communicating back and forth with each other. And Michael Newman and myself worked together 25 years ago, over 25 years ago. I think it was on one of the early Arnold films. And he was a production assistant. (laughs) And, you know, he was this cocky young guy, and he and I got along very well then. And it just happened that we come around years later to both work on Hawaii Five-O. So we have that history between us. There's a question I want to ask. If Even if, uh, let's just say, you weren't working specifically with Michael... When you're, what is the relationship like between a director or an assistant director and a uh, makeup artist? Between, well, the first assistant director is the top of the food chain when it comes to assistant directors. Sure. They start off at the first assistant, then they have second assistant, then there's called a second second. Right. You have your thirds and your your key PAs and your. There's there's just a whole group of people. Kind of like the military. It, like like the military. And your your first assistant director is your commander in the field. 
Yes, he has generals on top of him, above him, directors and producers, but for the most part, he's the sergeant commanding all the all the troops okay. in the field. And it's because I wear a walkie-talkie, and that's something we all do in the film industry, pretty much uh, most of the crew members have walkie-talkies on. Right. Some of them are dialed into their own departments, like grip and electric or, or camera. There's Channel One, which you're very familiar with as oh, a yes. production assistant. <laughs> and that's where that's home. most of the main communication goes on. And you better have something to say if you're going to get on Channel One. You don't just start going, hey, what a pretty day. Anybody know what lunchtime is? You know, you're going to get chewed on by your first assistant director. Oh, yes. But it's the first assistant director and myself, our relationship is communication. I let him know how long things are going to take. I may be texting him the day or two before saying, hey, when we go from scene 12 to 32, I'm going to need 35 minutes for that changeover or to clean that blood off or to put that bullet hole on that person or to change that woman from, you know, her glamorous look to getting out of the shower. Look. Wow. So it's very important for the department head of makeup and hair to communicate with that, that with if, the first assistant the gel. director. Yeah. Wow. So... <clears throat> Everything you do is methodical. I've noticed that. I always thought that maybe that was just a personality trait about you because you're you're very well planned. That's one thing I always <laughs> admired about you. It's like you always seem to know what you're gonna do like five steps in advance, and, and that's what I, I really looked up to you. You know, when we worked on set, it wasn't just the fact that we bonded and got close. I think I I more admired the way that you carried things because you would walk, you carry in your in own way, you carried yourself like a general. Thank you. Thank you. That's really... I wasn't in the military, but I do kind of look at the military as, all right, that formula works for certain things. Mm. The discipline, and I, I don't mean discipline as in, hey, everybody stand at attention. I'm walking in the room. I'm talking about the discipline of doing your job, the discipline of being where you need to be at the right time, of being on time in the morning. Yes. And then there's the organizational aspects of it, which the military has. And I've always thought of organization as almost a hobby of mine. I like to do it as, it, I like to make things as organized and as prepared as possible. Because in the film business, if you're not prepared, it costs money. And everybody stops and they look at you or whoever we're waiting for now. And basically everyone's thinking, why weren't you prepared for this? Now the company and the camera is waiting at $100,000 an hour wow. for you to go get that thing that you learned about two weeks ago when you read the script and then when you had the meeting about, why isn't it here now? And that kind of thing happens a lot. You really? wouldn't think that it would, but it happens a lot. Various departments. I won't throw anybody under the bus. It's and that's why you're a leader. Department. That's why you're Jeff it's Don. It's not the makeup department. We we not to say we don't screw up, but uh, we haven't so far. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you guys have an excellent track record. We it's do. very safe to say we what do. you just the said. Se our next season starting up in a few months, season uh, six. Uh, we'll see. But um, wow! Big shout out to season six. Season six, Y five O. Make sure you look out for that. And uh, we're going to go visit our sponsors. We'll be right back. Aloha. Welcome back to Pinoy Power Programs on KPRP 650 AM and PinoyPowerMedia.com. Jeff Dawn with Late Night Hawaii. Young Han, KPRP 650 AM. We're broadcasting statewide and we're live stream global on KPRP AM 650.com. Okay, so for um, our new listeners that are out there, we are in the studio live with the legendary, the one and only Jeff Dawn. Okay, so for our new listeners out there, let's give them a little bit of a background, although I don't think it's necessary. Let's it's, <laughs> thank you. Um, my background is I've been a makeup artist for the film and television business for the last 35 years. Um, before me was my grandfather, who ran the MGM makeup department as the director of makeup right. for many years, was responsible for over 100 films there, including Wizard of Oz. Which is a Small classic, instant classic, yes. yes. Yeah. And um, which was really state of the art at the time, with all of the, the, the technology that they had to come up with and create out of thin air just to make that movie work. Sure. And some of those technologies we're using still today. The really? prosthetics that we use, we, we use many different materials nowadays for fake skin. If you want to make somebody look older or you want to turn them into a monster or you want to turn them into a, a, a zombie, we use different materials nowadays. But we are still using from time to time what's called foam latex, 
And that's what they came up with back in the 30s to do all of those prosthetics and all those creatures. Wow. So it basically, the modern technology, all it really did was more, um, what's the word? Give a, a more a fine definition to the, yes. f- the special well, effects. Especially makeup. now that you have um, HD television and you have Blu-ray and all of this, which is kind of a nightmare to makeup artists because we like to be able to get away with little tricks that you don't see. You know, when, if somebody has a wig on, they have hair lace that glues down all the way around. Right. And that hair lace may only be that long onto the skin, and it's very, very fine lace that glues yes. down and presses into the skin, and you can't see it unless you're in a close-up with HD. Right. So nowadays, they have to go in there digitally, no matter how careful we are, whether it's a mustache or a beard or a wig, and you have this hair lace that's glued on, you can see it to the eye if you're looking closely. See it, uh... The old days with film, you wouldn't see that. You didn't have the definition to see right. it. Nowadays, you see it, so they have to go in in post-production and digitally digitally remove that they have to blur it a little wow bit. but it's, it's such a refined to the point where you don't even tell plus you use camera tricks right lots of camera tricks lighting you know there's so many times that i'll go up to an actor or an actress and say you know what don't do that with your face you know whether it's unflattering whether they're showing something under the chin that they don't want to see or you know, literally there's been times that i've worked with actresses that oftentimes actresses, as most human beings, most women, have a little nap of hair on their sure. face. You don't notice it unless you backlight it, unless you have a light. That between, shows it all. Yeah, so backlight, if, if, if I have a light here and you're looking at me, you're going to see a, a halo of lit up hair. Right. You don't want to see that with your lead actress. Right, 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 of course. And there's course. been two times in my past when I have warned actresses that this should be cut off. And they're like, no, 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 don't worry about it. And when we were ready to film, in her close-up, there's two different times with two different people. I won't mention their names. I have to say, I'm sorry. We got to trim that right now. So she's pretty much came out looking like Harry from the Hendersons kind of deal? Well, you, it just, it, you notice it suddenly. And right. This is back in the days before HD. Nowadays, it's incredibly critical. Right. But back with film, and you would see this halo of, of fuzz or a halo of fuzz. And it's like, okay, I go to the director of photography, I go to the director, and I mention this, and they're like, shave it. I'm like, oh, great. It's right before an actress is going to do her close-up, and you have to say, excuse me, let me shave that beard <laughs> on your face off I'm, I'm in sure front she, of the crew. I'm, you know? sure, I'm sure she was looking, she was wishing that you were going to oh, ask her that. Oh, times I got yelled at, but I had oh to do it. You oh, have yeah. to do it, and you, you know, you come with me. We need a few minutes, guys. We take, take the, the, took the actress off the set. Handed her a mirror and a trimmer, and we trimmed it, you know, with, with a, not with a, a, a straight razor, but with like a little electric facial trimmer. Awesome. It takes it down to just the tiniest, tiniest little nub so it doesn't irritate the skin. Sure. And both times they were pissed off at me, but that's just what you have to do at times. You just have to do that to get the shot. Well, uh, knowing you, you most likely gave them the opportunity to take the advice beforehand. Definitely. And they oh, chose yes. to go oh, yeah, the other I, route. I, but at the same time, they both her and I knew that this is something we spoke about and it had to be done, but it still didn't save my ass. So moral of the story, listen to the Don when he gives you <laughs> your opportunity to escape embarrassment pretty much because we're all here. For, he's here for you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and believe me, I'm much more prepared now. This was 20 years ago. Sure. If it happens now, I'll go right up to them and go, you know, this could happen and this is what's going to happen. It's going to be embarrassing for you. Do you want to do it now or later? And they'll go, oh, let's do it now. See, it's the pearl you know, of wisdom. So I love now, it. Right, I love now, it. Now I just kind of get in their face and go, you know what? Be prepared because if this happens on the set, don't you come yelling at me. Right. Because I'm giving you the opportunity right now. Warning label right here <laughs> and <laughs> yes. just so you know. But back to the materials. Um, nowadays we use various uh, translucent materials. Okay. Silicones and gelatins and urethanes. Things that when you add a little bit of skin color to them. Mm -hmm. And even what we call flocking. Flocking is little tiny hairs. Just imagine if you flock like almost a Chia Pet doll and it has a little fuzz on it. Like a a colorful, like a a cheap little hair that's been flocked on a plastic doll. Um, You can buy that in different colors. And when you mix that into materials, reds and browns and yellows, it adds a a, a three-dimensional texturing just under the surface that looks like skin. 
So we have all these tricks wow. to make something that's very translucent look less translucent and more like skin right? nowadays. You know, I, there's a question I want to ask you, and I know I didn't, I don't think I got a chance to ask this on the first, sh- on the first show we did together, which was actually my first episode of Late Nights with Young Han. Okay, so how was it making the makeup for Mark DeCoscos? Why is on? Um, that was, well, Mark, Mark is a fantastically talented and friendly, wonderful guy. He's very successful in his martial arts career, his acting career his own personal life, um, mm-hmm. in his cooking channels and foods that he now Iron offers. Chef, yes. Iron Chef, he's a, he's a, a he's machine He's the host. Now. That he's, he's the yeah. host. He's a, he's a whole corporation now. Mm-hmm. And he would come from time to time over the first few episodes and play McGarrett's nemesis, um, Mo Fat. And at one point, he crashes in a helicopter and is horribly burned. And that's we how had to, gets... that's, yes, the helicopter shot out of the sky. Okay. He's horribly burned, and they capture him. And they put him in prison. Okay. Where he stays for the next year or two until he breaks out. So during those seasons, we had to show him at various degrees of healing. And then he breaks out. And a year later, he comes back. And he's probably 80 or 90% healed. Okay. Now, that's really not that possible with technology today to have somebody healed as much as we did. But the idea was that he, he has so much money and he has so much power. He has, you know, very uh, James Bond-like ways of finding doctors in different countries and, and getting himself back to normal. And so it, he had all his hair back, and he looked fairly normal by the last time we filmed him. Uh, you know what? What what I really liked about the Wolfat character, I don't want to go too far off, but they almost made it like uh, he was uh, Alex O'Loughlin's Joker to his Batman bit. kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's an it was like they were they were comparison. almost made to kind of go up against each other. Sure. You don't see that anymore in shows. They're all more ba- This is realism that we're selling here in Hawaii right. 50, but we still give them that, you know, that extra. Sure. That movie feel. Well, keep in mind Hawaii 50 started out as a show that we didn't know what the market was going to be. We didn't know if it was going to be the 18 to 25-year-olds. Right. What that market was going to be. And what we've learned is not only is it an old show that's come back and it's doing very well and it's and it's uh, it's showing a lot of respect for the for the the islands as well as the oh, yes. old show. Oh yes. But it's it's bringing back a lot of that old storytelling, mm. and we realize that our demographic is older people, people in their forties and fifties that were around back then. That's why we're bringing in a lot of these uh, guest stars that were popular in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, wow, I didn't know that person was even alive still. They look fantastic. Oh, now they're <laughs> a guest star on Hawaii Five-0. Wow. And it's fun for me because that's my generation, to see these people coming and, and let them know, hey, I grew up with you, you know? You know something that dawned on me, Mr. Don? Yes. Was that, uh, <laughs> you know how in the original Hawaii Five-0, we had like Jimmy Borges, like, who was a singer here, mm-hmm. and he does like pop standard music, mm-hmm. but he played a villain but then you have uh, what was his name? He was uh, that that he was from the Jonas Brothers, Nick Jonas, right? Also a singer, great singer, mm-hmm. awesome guy. Mm-hmm. I had a chance to meet him on the set, and here he is playing a villain. It's almost as if the new Five O has definitely followed in suit with all the best characteristics of the original. Yes, they they knew that it worked back then, and they're not trying to reinvent something that isn't broken. I love you know, it. When we came, we first aired on. Um, what was it? Monday nights, I believe. The first, I think, three seasons were on Monday nights. Yes, I remember. And we had a really good following, a strong following. Nine, ten million people in the United States alone. Only nine or ten million, huh? Yes, <laughs> and that's only in the United States. We're in 220 markets around the world. So okay. I don't know the figures accurately, but I would assume that 20 to 30 million people watch this if each not week. not more. Each week. Not to mention the, you know, the, 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 the reruns and the, the DVDs and such. And when we first came out, it was Monday night. Well, then they put us last year, they put us in Friday night slot. Right. And we were all concerned about that. We mm-hmm. thought, ooh, Friday night, isn't that the graveyard? When they put TV shows there, don't they just disappear then? That's the graveyard. Right. Well, they did that, they meaning CBS. And I don't know if they realized it at the time, but by putting us into Friday night slot, our demographic of those 50, 40, 50, and 60-year-olds, they're not going out to parties on Friday night. Right. They're sitting home watching television. Right, right, right. So it was incredibly successful for us to wow. go to Friday night right. where, we, where we are now. On that note, um, before we go and visit our sponsors, I do want to point out one thing. 
Hawaii Five-0 was the most uh, DVR'd show, period. I think in uh, during season four. It was. And that, okay, so on the note, we're going to visit our sponsors. We'll be right back. Aloha. Babalik na tayo dito sa ating programa, dito sa KPRP 650 AM and PinoyPowerMedia.com. You should be my new girl, new girl Look into these eyes, you don't gotta do it, you're my new girl, new girl Jeff Dawn on Late Night Hawaii with Young Han and KPRP 6:50 AM, we're broadcasting statewide and we're live from Global on KPRP AM 6:50.com. Okay, so as the official Jeff Don Hour, it's the season five of Hawaii Five O Hour. You take us where you want to go. What what's next? Let's let's all okay. Let's talk about. Uh, I remember I was telling you before about um, how I could have seen you as an actor. You got the voice. You got the look. You got <laughs> uh, to me. You're a multitasker. You're you're very very well. You're very well, uh, very well. Um, what's the word? Experienced in this type of deal. You could have done this at a long, a long time ago. Thank you. I I've always been comfortable speaking um, in in to audiences, uh, doing radio shows, doing interviews, and I think it, it goes back to my father told me when I was a kid. He said, "You know what? The number one thing people are afraid of, of doing is public speaking." He yes. said, "You should take courses. You should get used to it because there will be times in your life that you'll be in front of an audience, and you better be prepared for it." I never took courses in it, but I just threw myself out there. I just started talking to people that would listen. If you had a microphone or you had a video camera and you wanted to interview me about, you know, how to get into the business or the techniques of the of, of the, the the makeup business or the history or whatever it might be, I, I could talk all day long. Sure. And I love lecturing on department heading because that's something that's dear to my heart, how to run a makeup and hair department, how to, you know, keep your, your cast and crew your producers, your money people, all those people happy. And, you know, they're a bunch of artists. So you need to treat artists that are also business people with a, a certain set of skills. Sure. You need to thank them, give them guidance, give them information, show appreciation, um, you know, keep them. Because we also, I say we, whether it's uh, uh, actors or makeup artists, we are children. Sure. And, you know, we, we want to throw our temper tantrums and we want to, you know, we, we want to be told, get, get, get a little pat in the back of the head once in a while and even be told when we're naughty and, you know, to yes. go, don't take five minutes in the corner. Yes. So you, you have to come into department heading with those skills, but kind of ramped up a bit for, for the egos, for the power that mm -hmm. some of these actors have. And you get to know them where you can just say, no, no, we're not going to do that. But you have to be careful, you know, if it's somebody very powerful and you don't know them well, they're going to go, what did you just say to me? You know, I couldn't do that with Bruce Willis. Right. But I could do it with Alex O'Loughlin because I know him so well. Your rapport is wonderful. Right. I did one picture with Bruce and, you know, we got to know each other fairly well, but I didn't have the rapport like I did later on with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Which I was going to say, what I about did. Arnold? Yeah, it was fantastic, Jeff. <laughs> don't you ever tell me no again, Jeff. Get out of here now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. And, you know, I worked with The Rock for, for several years on many films. Dwayne. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. And, you know, with those guys, I could I could literally go up to them after a take and go, that sucked. <laughs> you, 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 you want to do another one of those. <laughs> oh, wow. You know? Or, you know what? The way you just walked out of that pit right then, you look like a girly man. Wow. Was, I mean, literally. I mean, there was a scene in, in, in The Racer where Arnold was holding these two huge rifles and he has to step out of this this uh, damaged area on the floor and the step was quite large so he's trying to go up on one elbow and knee and get up with his things and i go arnold you want to do this again let's put some apple boxes some small boxes and make some steps down there that the camera doesn't see you can go boom 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 and just step out of there that looked it looked weak right it's a fantastic idea i want some apple boxes over here now Wow. And we put him in there, and he just stomped right out of there, and it looked great. So that's a job that you have as a, as a makeup artist, too. You want to support your actors. Mm. You want to, of course, make them look good when you need to. Make them look bloody or old or, or you know, what, whatever, your, whatever the requirements are. And you also need to support them, and you also need to let them know when they're full of shit. Right. And I do that now. Now that I've been doing this 35 years, things aren't gray to me anymore. 
They're very right. black and white. Right. I'll walk up, and when an actor hears me or an actress hears me go, that was really good. I want them to know that that's a genuine compliment, that that's not just flattery. That that, that's, really, that's a compliment really that, that, that I don't just throw out. Right. So then when I go up and go, you know what, that sucked, then they think, okay, well, maybe Jeff's accurate with that too because yesterday he gave me a compliment, and I know I did a good job, and today I thought I kind of sucked at that, and he just told me I did. And so hey, I'd like another take, please. Right. You know. And of course, you're doing it for their best benefits. You're looking I, for. I, out and for them. I am, and I just like honesty now. You know, it doesn't happen a that. lot. It's not like I'm guiding their careers. Sure. It's not like I'm the one whispering in their ear with every take. It doesn't happen that often. But when it happens, I'm usually very, I'm very adamant about it. And they know too. They know. Yeah, that that didn't feel right. I go. Yeah, just I, I didn't buy it, or you looked. Your eyes were asleep, and your mouth was talking. Right, you know, right, 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 right. You know, why don't you just wake up a little bit? And sometimes these actors are so tired that they'll rattle off a bunch of dialogue. Sure. And I'm sitting there looking in the at the monitor behind camera at their close-up, yes. and I'm going, okay, the, the zombie eyes here. Right. And I'll literally go up to an actor, and I'll take my thumb, and I'll go like that. And they know, you know. Well, here's here's the thing that I, I would say. I'm pretty sure you'd agree. Eighty percent of, uh, if not more, of an artist's image is physical, a visual presentation, and that's your category. So if you see somebody that's being less than accurate or not fulfilling their full potential, I imagine I would I I would expect that. I imagine that's why you have such a great relationship with these actors, because you know when you have to, when you absolutely mm-hmm, have to, mm-hmm. you'll step up and check them, right? Because I, I think that's what a real friend outside of because you know you've been you've been working with. Uh, Arnold for so many years, he's already beyond just an associate with you. Clearly, you guys are personal friends. Right. And no good friend would allow another friend to look bad, especially on a project that Uh, big. Yes. And it's just, you know, my job isn't just as, as as a makeup artist and especially a makeup department head where I'm responsible for the other makeup artists and the treader. It's my job to make sure that not only the actors and actresses walk out of the treader on time so that they don't slow down production because you're, it's costing up to $100,000 an hour, depending on what the project is. But they come out of there prepared, enthusiastic, positive, not with their heads filled with gossip, not with any negativity. So it's my job and our job to support them and to give them honesty and to get them ready because they come in all you know blurry-eyed, where's the coffee? Right. And an hour or so later, they walk out of there hopefully ready to go. They're mm. charged up. They've told some fun stories. They're awake now. Mm-hmm. So that's our job yes. to do that. I want to ask you a question. This is totally off base, but um, this was actually a request from Twitter. So, um, there, uh, Ashton Kutcher had gone up on a Nickelodeon show, and he had made comments about how um, there's certain insider tips and secrets to get your career to tick and click. Is that just a bunch of hoopla that um, he's saying to kind of like build momentum, or is there really? Have you ever seen or? heard of actors talking about that, like having to do certain things that are less than noble in order um, to get ahead? You, that is the case in any industry. Sure. We've all heard about casting couches, mm-hmm. which I am sure exist. I've never actually seen or been in a room when one of these casting couch events supposedly, right. allegedly happens. Yeah, allegedly. That's, but that's I'm safe. sure that they do. Okay. And have and probably will continue to. I'm sure that there are men and women that have done things that... Um, but keep in mind, we're talking about all industries, too. Right. If you have an industry that can give you fortune, not to mention fame also, right? people are willing to do a lot of things for them. Almost anything, really. Anything. Yeah. So whether you're talking about the gold industry or, or you know, just pick an industry that can make you rich. And that you can find that there. And you find it there. Sure. You find people that are going to prey on those who are looking to find that little pot of gold. Right. And when it comes down to it, it's networking. It's not burning bridges. It's, of course, continuing your education so your talent, whether it be an actor, actress, makeup artist, cameraman, so that you're up to the latest technologies and, and, and you, you hone your skills. And your reputation. At the, at the end of your career, you have a resume, you have a bunch of DVDs, and hopefully you have your reputation. Intact. And that is, you know, those 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 DVDs are going to be there no matter what. But the reputation is something that you have a choice on on controlling every day. 
And so you can do it with dignity and you can do it with that in mind, or you could go screw it. I don't care. I want the job. I'm going to do it. Do whatever I got to do. Do whatever it takes. So that does go on. It exists in all industries, including sure. the film and television business. Sure. You know what? And I really appreciate that. I know that uh, my listener out there is that, that, that uh, this probably be like the best answer I could have hoped for. Okay. Um, on that note, I think, wait, no. Actually, let's see. I got a couple more questions before we go off. Okay, so for our listeners that are tuning in right now that want to get started in makeup, I know we did this before, but just to be fair for anyone who didn't get a chance to hear, what would be your first suggestion to getting into the makeup industry? First thing I suggest to people, and people call me almost every day. Two hours ago, I had a coffee sit-down with a makeup artist that uh, her name is Charity. And she works in the theater here and also at Mac. And she's been contacting me now for weeks okay. saying, hey, Jeff, I want to just pick your brain. And this happens to me quite often. I do this many times each season, and I've done it throughout my whole career, where I'm happy to sit down with people. Um, I'm happy to talk with people, stay in touch with people. When I lecture, I put up my email and my phone number. I said, anyone in here ever has a question? The industry, the politics of the industry, um, any kind of an effect or situation, call me, get in touch with me. And people do all the time. The number one thing I suggest to people when they're interested in it is pick up what's called Makeup Artist Magazine. It's a magazine you can find at Barnes & Noble, you can get it online, and it's made by a makeup artist in the industry. He's been doing this now for 15 years, this this Makeup Artist Magazine. And it has techniques, it has schools, it has all of these things that then you can launch you to the next stage. Wow. And then you can go to school, there are schools all over the world. You can go to festivals. You can read up on all of these things. There's blogs. There's websites. And you can learn. And then you can apprentice. Now, I say apprentice. There are no apprenticeship programs. You can, um, you can be like a production assistant. And you can intern. Okay. And I've known many makeup artists that start out just hungry for knowledge. And years later, they're union makeup artists making big bucks working on cool actors and well-known TV and features. Wow. And it, you can do it. It's hard to do. You have to have some talent. You don't have to have crazy talent. You just have to have a really strong work ethic because it's a brutal business. You work 60, 70, 80 hours a week. You don't get enough sleep. You don't have a life. You don't have a family. I mean, I, I make it sound dramatic, but that is the reality of it. It is. It's, For it's years like, at a time. It's like almost like a, a modern traveling circus in a sense, huh? Oh, very much so. Oh, yeah, we're a bunch of gypsies. We really are. Yeah. And, it, it really and, and, and you become addicted to that. I, I've i traveled and worked all over the world my whole career, and the thought of sitting behind a desk for 50 weeks a year in one location, I'd want to kill myself. And not that there aren't so many wonderful people out there that do that and do it with happiness in their lives, but that's just not been my reality. And your heart's behind something else. That's My fine. heart is is the gypsy life. My heart is... Let's fly to that country and make those my friends. High five, man. Let's give me that. Give me that love. <laughs> On that note, we're going to visit our sponsors. We'll be right back. Aloha. Babalik na tayo dito sa ating programa, dito sa KPRP 650 AM and PinoyPowerMedia.com. Jeff Dawn on Late Night Hawaii. On KPRP 650 AM, we're broadcasting statewide and we're live stream global on KPRP AM 650.com. Oh my goodness. You know, it's a blast every single time I get on here with you. It's amazing. I, I really wish that we could have our own um, reoccurring show. It'd be great. Well, It'd let's be the, do it. be the Jeff let's Dawn do and let's Young Hunt show. Let's do it. I'll show. get away from this uh, the little Hawaii Five O thing that uh, they expect me to show up for fourteen hours a day on. No, because if you do that, then I'll have uh, Alex O'Loughlin hunting me down. Wondering, That's true. Where you be? Like, Where'd you take Don? Where Jeff go? I mean, he'd be calling. <laughs> Where's Jeff Don? I need to get Don up right. Will you, you, know, you you allow me to, to to play radio voice here? You know, a couple of times a year. So 
I like doing this. It's something that people have mentioned that I should get into uh, voiceover work. Yes. And the thing is that, not to, to, to slight that, but I love what I do. I don't know if I, even if I was successful at voiceover work, and that's a big assumption, um, if I would say, hey, this is really cool. I love doing this. So, you know, I love making people look dead and making women look gorgeous and making young people look old. That, to me, is fun. Right. You know, I tell uh, my, my department and when I, when I talk to makeup artists as a whole, um, because our actors are the ones that are in front of camera. They, of course, get the glory. They make the money. They have the fame, as they should. That's what they have chosen in life to do. We've chosen to be supportive in doing the makeup and making them look good or whatever, however way they need to. Sure. But we are artists as makeup artists. And what do artists like more than anything? Artists love their work to be seen. Yes. If you're a painter, whatever type of art you're doing, you want yes. hundreds or thousands or maybe even tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people to see it. In, in galleries or on the web or on television, wherever. We as makeup artists, when I put a makeup on or somebody in my department puts a makeup on somebody, even if it's a simple makeup or a cut or a dead body, whatever it might be, 20 to 30 million people each year see this all over the world between our domestic audience and the 220 um, uh, different uh, markets we have throughout the world. That's a lot of people that get to see your art. Of course, right. you wash it off at the end of the day, but you can always watch it later on. Yeah, it's you captured can forever. Pull on it film. up on you know Netflix, or you can plug in the DVD. Exactly. So as artists, we just get to have the best time. It's like a reoccurring art gallery in someone's uh, living room every night. It, it is, and you know, I'm, I'm fortunate, and those that are, that work for me are fortunate that we can go anywhere in the world and start mentioning films or television shows, and people go, "Oh yeah, I remember that." You did that, you know? Uh, well, Terminator and uh, Star Trek Four, which, by the way, he was uh, very much a part of. That's kind of hard <laughs> to not know. Seriously, I'm a Trekkie fan, so I'm, it's kind of yeah, like yeah. you know. Yeah, well, I'm not. Up, be, I'm being very biased right I now. Was, but I was fortunate to do Star Trek three, four, and five, oh my and God. Um, probably did Leonard Nimoy, bless his soul, Doctor Spock. Yes. Uh, did his makeup probably 80 times over those those years. That's and amazing. he unfortunately passed away recently. Oh, rest so in peace, sir. Rest wow. in peace. He was God a wonderful, him. very gentle, enjoyable human being. And he directed a couple of them that I worked on as really? well as, of course, played Spock. So how did you, looking at the transition, because we'll, let's talk a little bit about him since he you know, has passed away. Did you see the same level of passion when he was directing? Like as he was an actor, he was a great actor. We all yes, know that. Yes, yes, and he was he's a very calm, cerebral guy. He has a dry sense of humor that is ah. that, that was wonderful in the makeup trailer, okay, and also on the set. And he really didn't act any different. He was he wasn't all wow. jacked up on the set, you know, and, and 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 quiet in the trailer. He was the same easygoing, joking around person in the trailer as he was the set. Wow! So everyone loved working with him. I think that shows a level of self confidence when you don't, you can, like, you're like that too, though. Because the way I've seen you, how you are on set, and I've seen how you are off set, and you're generally the same. I mean, granted, you have to put your general hat on and, like, you know, sure. put those orders out there, but generally, you're still the same gentleman. I've noticed that you're very consistent. There's no, like, fakeness about Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to keep up the fake, whatever it is. You know, that's why when you see actors, I have found that actors oftentimes. Their characters that they play are very similar, if not exactly, to who they are. Mm -hmm. If they play a jerk over and over in films and television, they're probably a jerk. In real life, yeah. To it's degree. like Jorge Garcia, who plays our Jerry. Right. He was, um, um, of course, famous for, for Lost, for his character on Lost. He's this easygoing, very likable, a geeky guy that loves video games and computers and <laughs> art and you know, going to Comic Con and all of these things—that's the way he comes across on film and on camera, and that's the way he is. Wow! And that's typical of a lot of actors and actresses. You know, I I was always confused about that, um, about having to um, what's the word? Go and uh, betray a character that's so different from who you actually are. I mean, is that relevant? Do you think today or nowadays, or is it just more the now? It's just. Wherever you can, yes. You, well, you see, there are so many outstanding actors and actresses that do that, and of course, you go to see a Tom Cruise movie because you want to see Tom Cruise, right? 
But once in a while, he'll be able to pull a character out. You go, wow, I've never seen that. That's really cool. And there are certain actors and actresses out there that can do that. They can play very different characters where you don't even, you can't even see their, who it is. Yeah. that, that You know, you, it's, it's so remarkable that they've transformed themselves into such a different character, a different person. Sure. That's just pure talent. I mean, you can almost say that Jason Scott Lee and Marte Koskos kind of brought that in mm-hmm. Hawaii Five O because I seen their portrayal. I was like, "Wow, this is so different from what I'm used to." It's kind of exciting to see them kind of take a different approach. Yes, when you see such an easygoing, nice person become this evil, dangerous brute, it's exciting. It reminds it exciting. you that this is what we get into film for in the first right. place. That's what actors love. They love to go, you know, what they call outside the box, where they can mm-hmm. become someone that they're not, and not sure. all of them can do that. But you know what? I am. I believe that the diversity of this show is why we're leading unofficially. I mean, as far as I know, the media hasn't announced it yet. But the media hasn't announced it. it usually, the the world of television waits to high five each other until the studios come out in the media and okay. on the internet and say, right. "This is our fall lineup. These are the shows, including Hawaii Five O." But I can tell you right now that CBS has spent a lot of money on publicity. Wow. With photographers and taking, uh, doing work with our actors for next season. Okay. We have completely prepped the next episode, which starts in three months. We just wrapped season five, and we'll start up season six. Congratulations, by the way. Thank oh you. God. Sorry, Thank exciting you. news. So, my goodness. those of us in the know are just preparing for it. I'm moving oh. off island for a few weeks and then coming back. I okay, a question I want to ask. I was waiting for you to bring that up. Do you ever wake up off season? Like, okay, I got to get ready. And then you realize, oh, I'm not even working right now. I'm, it's it's downtime. Um, I do, but I'm able to 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 click into that world very quickly. If I'm in L.A. working on, I have a trailer business, uh, makeup and hair trailers. If I'm down there and I wake up in a hotel, I'm usually not thinking about Hawaii Five O or makeup. I'm thinking about my trailer business. If I'm in my home in right. Bend, Oregon, I'm thinking about you know camping and things like that, or with my my girlfriend in uh, uh, Portland. You very know, lovely, about, by the way. Thank you. You too. You're a very lovely couple. Thank you. Thank you. Belinda Parr is her name. And, uh, we've Shout been out to you, Belinda. For, for many years now, and uh, we have a lot of fun together. Wow. And Amazing. she's not in the industry. So <laughs> that's something I find that it works for some people, sure, but not all. And I've chosen to, to date outside the industry. And I it's imagine, worked out very well. I imagine it must be really, really refreshing to have somebody that doesn't use industry talk that will have something else to talk to you about. Very much so. She's in the medical industry, which fascinates the heck out of me. I oh, would yeah. love to have been a doctor. She's not a doctor. She's um, a, a, a um, medical assistant. And um, But I love that industry so much. And sure. But she's getting to be more like me. You know, all of the little things we say in the film business, like when you're ready, when you're really ready in the film business, we say ready, ready. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? No, I'm ready, ready. That wow. means roll camera, basically. Right. You know, and there's so many different terms, film industry terms that I use just as part of my my dialogue. Sure. Now, so and my kids use it, and my ex-wife who's used it for years, and now Belinda, who's been with me for years, is used to it. Wow. So does she, does she ever, in return, just respond because she knows exactly what you're saying? Oh, she knows exactly. She doesn't use the same words I use yet. We'll okay. We'll get in, in there. Get but, in there. Uh, she knows. You know, she knows the dialogue. Wow, that's really amazing. You know, actually, I do want to share a tiny little, uh, a, a tiny little piece uh, talking about a uh, film jargon. You know how we communicate and acknowledge? We say, "Oh, go for Jeff Don." Right. So, as you know, uh, on Hawaii Five, I went by my real name, Josh. So every time I went out to the radio, I say, "Go for Josh." That actually ended up being the name of my record label, G Four J Entertainment, which that's is so actually cool. yeah. So you know. It's it's a it's a little uh, piece that I just wanted to add to that. You no, know, that's I, fantastic. It's weird because sometimes someone will ask me something and I'll say copy that. Yeah, out of the blue. It's, it's, it's very it's, it's very uh, walkie talkie talk. <laughs> copy that. What's your twenty? You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, like you know the, the strange thing too is that you could ask me almost anything. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Just after hearing it so many times, very exciting stuff. Yeah. When you're listening to the walkie talkie and all the different people talking all day long, you you learn the jargon very quickly. Okay, and on that note, we're going to go visit the top of the hour. We will be right back. Aloha. Aloha. 
tumtong yag kayo ditoy baro ken kapitiksaan nga Filipino Radio ditoy Hawaii 650 KPRP AM Honolulu and global streaming on pinoypowermedia.com The views and opinions expressed on the following program do not reflect those of the staff and management of Pinoy Power LLC. Back on Late Night with Jeff Dawn. And Young Han Hawaii and KPRP 6.50 AM. We're broadcasting statewide and we're live stream global on KPRP AM 6.50.com. Oh my goodness. We are actually, unfortunately, at the very end of the show. And every time we get on together, I feel like we just have to have like a two-hour special. You know what I mean? I don't think one hour is enough for the Dawn and Young Han. <laughs> <laughs> so I did well, that, right? <laughs> hopefully the audience has been entertained and learned something and they're not... Uh, always. When you're on the show, Jumping always. out of buildings right now. No, if they are, it's mainly because they want, they're aspiring to become the next stuntman of the year. Speaking of stuntmen, I remember when you wanted to get into stunts. I did. Actually, I still do, but I felt like, kind of like what you said, You how, can you see yourself passionately getting behind it years mm-hmm. and years and years? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me, as much, because I respect, you know, Danny Kim, who I consider a friend of mine, taught me a lot and it, by Denny Kim is actually the official stuntman one of the biggest in Hawaii if not the biggest and the official stuntman for Daniel D. Kim and you know the, the thing that he told me was you know you really have to love this because it's a very physical mm-hmm. job so you're putting your lo- you're putting your body on the line every time you go out there from the simplest fall to you know something more, more amazing I, for me as much as I love doing that I always see myself as a talent in front of the camera but you know and that that's a long process in itself and my, my strongest talent to date, it was always music. And, you know, I, I was, I, it was a talent I never really shared with you in the beginning or anybody, really. I was really shy mm-hmm. on, on the set. But when I left the show, because we had a conversation, actually, you you really you set a fire under my butt and you told me, you know, it's really on you. If you're still in the same spot a year from now and we're having a meal here, I'm going to tell you it was on you. And I remember that. And that changed everything for me. You man. really did make some changes because at the time you didn't know if you wanted to get into production in the film industry, did you want to get into stunts? Did you want to do acting? You've always been passionate about martial arts. Sure. You know, you had so many different things that you were good at, but none of them were just really grabbing a hold of you. Right. And the changes I've seen you make over this last almost two years has been phenomenal. I mean, your success, your passion, your the, the, the doors that have opened up for you, and you're the one who opened those doors. I appreciate it. Thank so, you so much. Congratulations to you. No, oh, thank you, thank you. You know, <clears throat> going back to what I was saying before, when I would watch you work, because I know you're very methodical and you're very successful at what you did, I kind of took that as like, uh, I mean, I, I still did my own thing in the in the end of the day, of course, every man has to make their own decisions. Mm-hmm. But I think it's the people who we choose to surround us is really what makes us who we are. And I like to choose to surround myself with good people who just happen to be winners and be the best at what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, that was always my interest, and that's why I'm, I'm honored to call you a friend. Well, You're thank a you. dear friend of mine. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I'm careful how I define winner because, you know, it's what I might consider successful and winner. Some of the next person might think, you know, you're selling out. True, but so, it's, it's, it's all in perspective. That's absolutely. how I look at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for me, to, to clarify, my definition of a winner is somebody who consistently – does what is a man of their word, man or woman of their word, very respectful to others, and truly has a respect for what they do. And they're successful at it Excellent because of definition. it. Excellent that, definition. That's, I mean, like I said, it's just, I think that's partly what I learned working on set. Because, you know, it's interesting. You hear things about the film industry or about the entertainment industry, but you don't totally know until you're there, mm-hmm. knee deep in it, you know, with everybody else burning under the hot sun mm-hmm. for 13 hours a day. It's it's not glamorous. No, it's the, sure it is. The isn't. rap parties are glamorous, and you know the magazines and the, the the Academy Awards, things like that, are that get all the press. That's very glamorous. Sure. But 99.9 percent of it 
including these very wealthy, successful actors and actresses, is not a glamorous life. Sure. But that's what makes those events that you show up to that much more meaningful. True. That's why a lot of people don't get why everybody's all out there popping their bow tie off in their tuxedo when they're going and getting an award. It's because of all those hours and years of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people and don't know a, that. It's also a thank you for... because. Anyone who receives an award or any kind of accolades in the sure. film and television business knows that there are hundreds, thousands of people that are just as deserving, that yes. didn't happen to get that call for that particular pro particular project. Sure. You know, there are certain, certain films that come up that anyone that took that role was going to win an Academy Award. Right. You know, it's when I won the Academy Award for Terminator 2 for the makeup. It could have been... Anybody. It could have been a, a, another dozen people that happened to take that job that would have won the Academy Award for it because it was inherent in James Cameron's story and the design work of, 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 of um, Stan Winston. So I was fortunate. And, you know, you have to, you, you have to really appreciate those, those moments. That's, that, you know, I, I totally agree. You know, I, I know we're getting too close. I'm trying to squeeze everything in at once. <laughs> But there's something that you told me. You've you said this in two different shows, and it stayed with me. Actually, even in a normal conversation, you talk about how much love you have for Hawaii. Yes. Um, and you're pretty much kamaina at this point. You've been Thank here for you. so That's long. A, you're a <laughs> local moko moko. Yes, I've been working here on different films for years. I did uh, the majority of a couple of years of Lost, and yes. now I will. I've just finished my fifth year on on this. So I spend nine, ten months a year here. And I, I love it. I will I will spend part of the rest of my life in the Hawaiian Islands because it's it's part of me now. Sure. I'm part of it. The Hawaiian Islands will kick you off if you're not right for it. Or embrace will, you. Or like embrace you and hold you here. And I, I can't mm -hmm. seem to get off the island and stay <laughs> yeah, I got and I love you. that. Because That's it's, beautiful. it's it, the culture, the food, the people, the families. It's just I'm for the a mainland Howley boy, I'm honored to be here and you know, nobody's coming up and handing me a ticket and saying, get off our island. Oh, no. At least not yet. We'll see what's waiting outside the door when I leave right now. But well, you know, <laughs> if anything, it'll be uh, roses and hugs. That's for sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's something I, I did want to point out, and this might actually, because of who you are, this could actually help us a lot. Did you hear about Jason Momoa? He started a, mo a movement called We Are Mauna Kea. Mm -hmm. I've been watching that. I've been and, uh, getting many different uh, tweets on that, uh, mm -hmm. different uh, Facebook posts. Yes. So what they're doing right now, I think it's called makeachange.org, where you can actually sign a petition saying that, and it's basically all people. He was he, he first he uh, was only reaching out to Hollywood um, connects mm -hmm. like The Rock mm -hmm. and whatnot to to help him with this, but now he's asking everybody. And being the fact that you're an industry individual, it's something I want to pass on to you. Maybe you can even talk to some of the cast. They're taking a picture, uh, hashtag We Are Mauna Kea, mm -hmm. and it's making a big movement because we're trying to get uh, Governor. Governor Ige, Governor Ige, to overturn the decision because they're basically going to rip apart a, 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 a. To me, it's it's amazing. How are you going to destroy a natural creation that was here longer than you? And I think that was kind of the whole point of the movement. Yes. So just something I want to point out with you because yes, you are would, as much Hawaii as anybody here. I would love to be helpful, here. but I'm leaving the island tomorrow. So for me to try to be influential to any of the actors that are here, I'm packing tonight and leaving first thing in the morning. No, I understand. Yes, but I would I would love to because I'm I'm very much in support of defend Hawaii and keep you know Hawaiian Hawaii for Hawaiians and you know just imagine what would happen if the people with the money and the people with the industry moved in here and did what they wanted to. This sure. would be completely a different, it would be a different planet within 10 years. Wow. I never thought of it that It would way. be completely. So, you know, whether it's the North Shore, whether it's the Windward Side, whether it's the top of a mountain, you know, it's it, it's tough for me to see what's going on in downtown Honolulu now and right. Waikiki. I mean, the construction that's going on now over the last few years that I've been here has just exploded exponentially. There are so many cranes out there. What's that going to do to the infrastructure? What's that going to do to the, the traffic? You know, and I'm one of these people that's renting in one of these buildings. Sure. But it's just, it's sad to see that it could, it will influence thousands more people coming here. Vehicles, garbage, sewage, you know, it's just, it, it's hard for me to speak about this because like I said, I'm one of these people yes. using the, the systems. So why don't I make a voice and me leave first, you know? No, I think that 
in this particular case, there are two types of people that come to Hawaii. There are those that come here to give and actually bring something mm -hmm. for the people. Point. And then you have others that come to just take. Wow. That's a and very simple concept, but it's, it's true. really black and white. You really think about it. And it's people that are from here, people that are visiting and end up living mm -hmm. here. It doesn't matter. Color, a, a, mm -hmm. origin, doesn't matter. In the end, that's really what it's about. And I like to say, I like to think that you're the first. You're the first choice. You're the one that actually brings your love here to Hawaii. Well, and that's why Hawaii has embraced so, you. There are, the there are many like myself that probably contribute so much more sure. to the Hawaiian Islands. You know, what do I do? buy my groceries at Safeway, you know, the local Safeway. I mean, what do I do to contribute to Hawaii other than speak fondly and passionately about it? I think that that's more than enough when you can, when just the positive energy is good enough. But I think what you bring, and in your modesty, I know you wouldn't say this, so I'll say it for you. I think you bring your wisdom, you bring your charisma and your experience. And Thank you. I think there are certain people in this world that I believe in God. I believe that the creator brings certain people in this world have certain talents that can actually bring a change, a positive change to the mm -hmm. environment around them. And I think you're one of those people. And, Thank you. And you don't have to throw a single punch or blow up dynamite or anything to make a difference. All mm -hmm. you have to do is just do what you do. And and, and giving a positive, and, uh, positive aura wherever you are, that creates such a, uh, an amazing impact on people more than any amount of money could ever do. And that's just my, and that's what I believe in you. That's what I see in you. And I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. <laughs> Thank you. I know I'm not. I, 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 really try not. To, I try to live life that way. You're, you you are you really are a, a true friend and a mentor, and I want to thank you again for coming onto the show. Every time, yeah, actually, you know what? Before we go, we got to do the custom shout outs. The shout outs yes. to my wonderful crew. First off, Karen Prizer. These are all makeup artists. Woo! Thank you. Yes. Laura Ogden. Laura. All right. Um, Kristen Sifton. Okay. Chantal Boomla. Yes. There are many others that that I hire from time to time that have lived and worked here for. Decades. We that, love you. That are that belong here more than I do. And they make me look good. They make the show look good. The Hawaiian people, you guys. Appreciate that. Thank you, I'm Jeff. honored to be here. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Hawaiian people. All right. And, you know, on that note, just be ready. So you heard it here first. We will have Hawaii Five O season six. It's going to be a kick-butt season. I know we're officially wrapped, but the episodes are still playing right now, correct? Yes. So we have a whole sling, a lot of more episodes to enjoy. So make sure you get ready because it's going to be a kick butt next season. Jeff Don, I got to have you to come back on again in the beginning of season six. That'd be, maybe okay. it'd be a recurring maybe. thing. Maybe we'll do a thing where in the beginning of the season and at the end of the season, we'll kind of do something together. We'll see. If you get like 100 emails right now saying, well, you know what? We're never going to listen to your show again if that Jeff Don comes back one more time. You, no, you know what? I think what we're going to do is we're going to get 100 emails saying, you know what, Young Han, we love you, but I think it's Jeff Don's time. <laughs> I think yeah, it needs yeah, to be okay. Jeff Don's so show. You stand on the side. Yeah, and, I'll be sitting here. Yeah, and, and, and I'll be your guest. Okay, and this will be your go. show. That would be funny. That would be and, a funny and That'll be the change. late nights with Jeff Don at KPRP, <laughs> 6 50 a.m. <laughs> But anyways, you know, I love you, man. You know, you're you're one of my best friends. And I, I like to say that no matter where we go in our career, I will always be a good friend to you and you'll be a good friend to me. Absolutely. And um, many more years here. Exactly. <laughs> and on that note, thank you for tuning in to KPRP 650 AM Late Nights with Young Han Hawaii. I will be back Wednesday night at 8 with a special guest. But look at my social media and I will tell you who. Calling on the radio, you bloody boss. Where is my friend? This is from a fan. Call on number one. Said a shot at the heart, cut a smoking gun This one goes out to you, don't act like you don't know me well I never miss an opportunity to kiss and tell So kiss me well, as a telling kiss You say it's just a crush, but what is this? You give me the rush, you know I give it to Oh, we have a moment, a moment or two If it's okay, I like to share the special one with you You say I make you feel like you're the only one When you hear me sing, you feel the spring is sprung I had you through the heart, cut a smoking gun I said someone come, I would you want to go Should you leave me hanging, I feel my heart it froze So my new alias is Mr. 30 feet below
Nice. Thank you for tuning in. Peace.